गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द सेशन ऑन द शेड्यूल एनिमल्स दैट आर लिस्टेड इन द वर्ल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट 1972 गाइस वी हैव स्टार्टेड द टॉपिक दैट इज द बायोडायवर्सिटी सेकंड मॉड्यूल ऑफ आवर एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी सो इन द सेकंड मॉड्यूल ऑफ एनवायरमेंट इकोलॉजी वी हैव सीन द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द बायोडायवर्सिटी इन दैट वी हैव सीन द द मेजरमेंट ऑफ द बायोडायवर्सिटी लेवल्स ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी ओके एंड द कंजर्वेशन एफर्ट्स after that we have seen the biodiversity and food chain and the last topic that we have seen is red data book okay and after that we have taken the second chapter of our biodiversity that is indian biodiversity in the topic we have seen the classification of biogeographical zones okay after that we have seen the fauna so uh, how the fauna have been classified and the flora and the last topic is wildlife in india so these four topics we have seen in the indian biodiversity now i am taking the third chapter of our biodiversity session guys that is the scheduled animals that are listed in the wildlife protection act 1972 so the topic for the discussion is scheduled animals scheduled animals listed in wildlife protection act wildlife protection act 1972 okay so this is the topic for discussion scheduled animals listed in the wildlife protection act 1972 so we are going to see what is its importance and why so why we need to have the schedules okay what the schedule deals with all those things we are going to see in this chapter guys guys as i said scheduled animals listed in wildlife protection act 1972 guys so scheduled animals guys scheduled animals means these are the one which are given the highest protection guys highest protection because of the many reasons why well, because these are the animals which are useful for our needs like if you take the examples of the king cobra that is used in the cancer making medicines guys okay like that like that and after that if you say few animals are going extinct guys so in that we have the schedules and we classified few animals in the different schedules guys okay of the wildlife protection act 1970 wildlife includes both flora and the fauna that is the plants and animals guys guys if if you see so these are the one which are having the varying degree of the protection guys okay the animals are having the varying degree of the protection and if you, and also if that is the poaching smuggling and illegal trade of the animals listed in the schedules or having offenses or having the fines okay is prohibited okay guys guys in this we are having the six schedules six schedules okay guys six schedules we have been classified in this process okay and among this schedules schedules 1 to 4 are very very important guys we have most protection from schedule 1 to schedule 4 okay that is the poaching smuggling and the illegal trade of animals listed in schedule 1 to schedule 4 are prohibited okay guys i said poaching smuggling and illegal trade okay so this have been greatest protection guys this have been given the greatest protection guys so i start my discussion with the schedule one of this process okay schedule number one so animals present in the schedule one are be having absolute protection animals present in the schedule one are having the absolute absolute protection guys absolute means at any cost means for every time always like we we have no restrictions we have no exceptions then we take the word absolute okay absolute protection animals listed in the schedule one are having absolute protections guys and we have the offenses which are greater in penalty okay the offenses okay okay the offenses who violated the provisions that are listed in the schedule one will be having the greater penalty will be having greater penalty guys greater penalty 
okay so this is these were the one which are having absolute protection and the offense and the offense includes the greater penalty now we will see what are the animals that are listed in the schedule one of the wildlife protection act 1972 so if you see the animals like lion tailed macu guys lion tailed macu lion tailed macu is the one which is present in the schedule one of the uh wildlife protection act 1972 and after that we are having the black buck black buck okay lion tailed macu black buck so these are the few animals that are present in the uh wildlife protection act 1972 that is the schedule one of we and the and the one more is great indian bustard great indian bustard okay okay guys so these are the one which are present so etc okay so this will be given highest protection guys highest protection so black buck okay the indian great bustard the lion tailed macu so these are present in the nilgiri areas nilgiri areas okay so if anyone is violating the laws present in the schedule one they will be having the greater penalty guys okay guys so what is the thing that we need to remember in this session is so what are the provisions regarding schedule 1 and what are its examples okay they will may ask in the questions so what are the animals present in the schedule 1 whether they are having the greater penalties or not whether they have the absolute protection or not okay guys these are the examples of the uh, listed in present in the schedule 1 okay that is the lion tailed macu black buck and the great indian bustard etc guys okay shall we move to the second one okay so second one will be also be having the absolute protection guys so second one we were taking the that is part 2 of the schedule 2 guys okay part 2 part 2 of schedule 2 okay so the first one we are having the schedule 1 guys and the second one we are having the part 2 of the schedule 2 so the animals present in the part 2 of the schedule 2 will be having the absolute protection and the offenses will be having the in greater penalty in the offenses will be having in the greater penalty guys okay so if you see what are the animals that are present in the uh, that are present in the uh, schedule 2 of schedule 2 of the wildlife protection act 1972 if you see the examples the examples are <clears throat> so the example that we are having that flying squirrel okay flying squirrel <clears throat> sorry sorry guys okay so the examples that are present in the part 2 of the schedule 2 we are having the absolute protection and the offenses includes the greater penalty so if you see the examples these are the examples that is the flying squirrel guys okay uh, otherwise that is the thesis macu thesis macu okay so these are the two examples etc okay and we have king cobra king cobra present in this only okay okay guys i said the king cobra is the one so this uh, the king cobra is used in the medicine of the cancer guys okay flying squirrel the thrush is macu okay uh, king cobra these are the examples of the part 2 of schedule 2 now i will move to the part 3 of the schedule guys okay if i take the part 3 of the schedule uh, of the wildlife protection act 1972 so these are also will be having that is protection right but this protection is not much as like as the the schedule 1 and the part 2 of the schedule 2 okay so we have the part 3 so part 3 is 
having the protection of the animals but this somewhat lesser than the schedule 1 and shed and the part 2 of the schedule 2 so if you see the examples that of the schedule uh, that is part 3 we have a hyena a hyena okay guys and the deer oh hog deer oh hog deer okay so etc so a hyena a hog deer are the examples of the part 3 guys means these are also having the protection but not as much as the the part 1 and the schedule 2 of part 3 so if we see the part 4 so the part 4 also will be having that is the mongoose and the vultures okay etc okay guys so the the mongoose and the vulture will comes under the part 4 of the wildlife protection ad guys okay so this four that is s1 to s4a are having the absolute protection guys absolute protection now if you see the part 5 and the part 6 guys so part 5 is the one which is allowed for the uh, hunting guys okay so part 5 is the one which is called as the these animals we call as the vermins vermin we call this animal as the vermin and these are allowed for the uh, hunting these are allowed for the uh, hunting purposes so if you see the examples of the that is part 5 the examples include the rat mice okay okay guys rat mice uh, common crow common cow okay and we have uh, flying squirrel sorry flying fox guys flying cats so that is the fruit eating bat fruit eating bat flying fox okay okay guys rat mice common crow okay uh, flying fox that is fruit eating bat so these are the examples of the uh, schedule 5 guys okay schedule 5 schedule 5 colleagues are the warnings they are allowed for the uh, hunting guys that is the rat mice common crow that is flying fox it is fruit eating bat okay these are the warnings and the last one is the schedule 6 so in the schedule 6 we are uh, having the protection guys this deals with the plants this deals with the plants guys in the schedule 1 2 3 4 5 deals with the animals whereas schedule 6 deals with the plants that is the cultivation cultivation a collection extraction of trade okay so cultivation collection extraction for trade of these plants are will be protected will be prohibited guys cultivation collection extraction for the trade of the plants listed in this schedule 6 are prohibited like we have the red wanda red wanda blue wanda okay pitcher plant pitcher plant okay guys so like this etc okay the red wanda blue wanda pitcher plants okay the ladies sandal exactly ladies sand orchards ladies sandal orchards etc so these are the one which will be prohibited that is the cultivation collection or the extraction for the trade of these species these are the plants these are the plants whereas the schedule 1 to 5 are deals with the animals guys okay this is about the scheduled animal scheduled animals listed in the wildlife protection act 1972 now i am going to take this session with that is the extension in the species extension guys so why it is going to extend so so what are the causes making them to extend the species okay extension of species
okay extension of species guys species will be extend for different purposes for different maize for different regions so if you take the first process that is deterministic process deterministic process we have different process of the species extension so the deterministic process deals with the cause and effect this deals with the cause so cause and effect so cause and effect if you take the examples like we have glaciation guys so why do you mean by cause and effect so so the process is happening from because of the those process is called as cause and effect like we have for every action we have the reaction like that is action and reaction type process is called as deterministic process action and reaction process okay so the thing that is happening from because of the other thing is called as the deterministic process we have for example glaciation okay guys glaciation is happening because of the uh, many issues so because of the different formation we are having the glaciation guys so glaciation is the example of the determining factor and after that we are having the deforestation okay so deforestation if you take so we are doing deforestation for the development purpose okay so for the development purpose we are doing the deforestation but it has its effect if you do the deforestation okay guys if you do the deforestation the biodiversity will be going to last that is that is we have the cause and effect process is called as the deterministic process the second one is so is uh, so static process so so static stochastic process it is called as the random cause random random one cause okay like we are we are having the floods guys okay so we are having the floods cyclones okay and and uh, we have droughts then what makes the food supply that is the food available that is the food supply will be decrease the volcanics so that is the random cause and effect is called as uh, stochastic process in the stochastic process it is going to destroy that is unknowingly that is effectively that is randomly okay guys this is all the extension process guys okay so the degree or the size so depending upon the degree on the size it is going to extend guys it is going to extend in as the genetic diversity depending upon its degree and size that is going to extend in the genetic diversity that is okay now we will see what are the traits that are making this species vulnerable to the extinct so if we see the traits that are making this species vulnerable to the extinct the first and foremost species uh, trait that is going to Uh, that is making this species extinct is the rare guys okay rare the first one is rare or low abundance low or low abundance okay okay guys the rare or the low abundance so because of this species rareness or its low abundance it is going to the extinct okay we are going to see the traits okay and the second one we have the unstable population unstable population is also one of the reason because of its extinction guys okay the third one is ecosystem okay ecosystem stability okay sir okay guys ecosystem uh, so we can say that uh, ecosystem habitat okay that is the rare or the low abundance unstable population ecosystem habitat okay these are the few traits of the this reasons the it is extinction the species guys okay guys with this we are done with this chapter guys so there is a small chapter that we need to know answer so what are the species present in the schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 and the schedule 4 of the wildlife protection act and the schedule 5 and the schedule 6 okay this will deals with the plants and the animals that is schedule 6 deals with the plants okay guys and we know and we should know what are the extinction causes of the species okay thank you guys thank you one and all and we come with the next session that is plant diversity guys our important topics that is so we are done with the three chapters in the biodiversity that is first one is the importance of biodiversity second chapter we are done with the uh, 
biodiversity indian biodiversity guys on third one is the scheduled animals listed in the wildlife protection act 1972 that is the third chapter guys there is nothing it is small concept so we have clearly explained and after that we are going to take the plant diversity animal diversity the protected area networks conservation efforts so with this we are going to complete the biodiversity chapter guys okay thank you thank you one another <coughs>